Hey there, sixth graders! How are you doing today? Happy Wednesday. We're already halfway through the week. How about that? Um, today we're going to continue our exploration of Greece, and we're going to talk today about their city-states. And we're going to try to figure out what, how that geography of Greece uh, shaped its society into multiple different city-states rather than one unified government, say like the Romans. So, let's, or the Egyptians, or the Chinese. Mesopotamia had a different city-states too, kind of similar, but, all right. I'm getting ahead of myself, or behind of myself. And anyway, let's get into it. So, here we see this beautifully colored map of Greece. And we can tell this is ancient Greece because it's showing many, many different city-states. Um... Why did these city-states evolve? Well, Greece is a land with, as we've learned, that has many natural barriers. The mountains separate people. It's hard to get past one mountain to another. So if you're on one side of the mountain, you tend to kind of evolve doing your own way of life, developing your own culture, your own things. Uh, the two different peninsulas. The fact that you had two separate peninsulas that are connected by a very small isthmus. Um, that is a natural barrier. The fact that it's composed of hundreds of different islands, an island itself surrounded by water, has a lot of natural barriers. And each of these different places um, evolve a bit differently from one another and in many ways become little mini civilizations. City-state is like a nation-state, just littler. A city-state acts like a country. It has its own military. It has its own religion, often its own beliefs, its own uh, system of living. Um, but it's the size of, you know, proportionally a city. Um, so let's dig into this a bit more. Uh, one thing you might notice in some of these city-states, we're going to see some really important ones. In particular, we see Athens right here. That's going to be a big one. We see Thebes over here. That's going to be one that's going to be talked about in your book as well as, or your readings of the article Corinth right here. Another important one right on the Isthmus of Corinth. And then down here, we see Sparta, the other one of our big four uh, Greek city-states. So why did they evolve this way? So each city-state... Um, kind of picked up its own identity if you were in traveling throughout ancient greece and you went from one city state to another you'd think that there were very unified um and we'll get into a lot of things that were similar on the outside they looked very similar had similar architecture similar food spoke a similar language um but it's once you got inside, once you start meeting and talking to the people and seeing how things run, you realize, wow, each of these places is very different, right? Did they have the same religion? Yeah. But the way that Athenians worshipped uh, the Olympians is different than the ones that, the way that the Spartans did it. In particular, their gods and goddesses were of a group called the Olympians. There were many different gods and goddess that, goddesses that were in charge of their own different areas of the universe that they controlled. And depending on what the values were of their city-state, well, depending on what god they liked more, who was their patron, who they thought like looked after them the most. So like for Athenians, who really value wisdom and learning, it makes sense that Athena, who their city is named after, is their patron goddess because, well, she's the goddess of wisdom. Makes sense. Uh, for the Spartans, who are very warlike um, and very merciless <laughs> in parts of their culture, the fact that their favorite patron god is Ares, the god of war, makes sense. So, yeah, they had they all believed in those same gods, but they had different ones that were their patron. Um, they had many different systems of governments. You Imagine if you're going from Munaki to Little Ferry, and in one place... Munaki has got a functioning democracy, like, you know, it does. And in Little Ferry, there is a king who rules over that one town. 
And then in Woodridge, they're uh, run by a religious organization. And then in another place, only the rich people have power. Well, that's kind of like what it was like in ancient Greece. Each city-state had its own system of government, its own system of laws, its own system of rights that were very, very different from one another. And when you have different... We're, when they have different forms of government, that's reflective of different values. Our government that we have, where we, the people, are the boss, are in charge, and that our rights are protected, is reflective of inherent values, values of Americanism. Well, the laws and values of different city-states reflect their beliefs, and that government is reflective of that. So, you know, the Spartan oligarchy, where you were allowed to rule by proving yourself on the battlefield by being one of the elite of the military is a bit different than, say, Athens, where every citizen has a right to vote on the laws. Or, say, Corinth, where only the wealthy had a say in government. So each different place had its own system. They also compete against one another a lot. Each of them are competing for the same customers for trade around the Mediterranean world. So they often are trying to outsell each other. They you know, imagine you know, McDonald's and Burger King competing against one another. They're selling pretty much the same thing, but they're trying to convince you that theirs is better. Well, Athens, Sparta, Thebes, Corinth, they're all selling pretty much the same thing, but they're competing against one another. They want you to buy off of them. If you're competing for trade, you're also often competing militarily. It's no shock that there's a lot of wars between the Greek city-states and uh, some devastating ones. In fact, when they're successful militarily is when they actually put down their differences and unite around what is commonly connects them. See the Persian War unit that we'll be talking about soon. And they even compete against one another for fun. Um, within their religion, there is a four-year holiday period that we know as the, uh, the, uh, the Olympics. Hey, we have an Olympics in our culture as well. We're emulating the Greeks. Cool. And the, this, the Greek city states, even if they're at war would lay down their weapons and compete against each other in contests, uh, to honor the gods. So there were the, even though they were coming together, they would also be competing to see who was the best one at honoring the gods. But for all these differences, there is so much that they do have in common. And that commonality of Greek culture is often referred to as Hellenistic culture. I'll get more into who Helen was. Uh, she's a character from a story called uh, the Iliad, uh, which is really important to Greek mythology and Greek literature. Um, but in that story essentially the Greeks unite together as one army to fight against a common foe. So that common united Greek culture because of that story is referred to as Hellenistic culture. So there are many different aspects of Hellenistic culture that are similar from city state to city state. Um, their religion as previously mentioned, they worship the same pantheon of gods, the Olympians, their artwork, uh, here you see the uh, realistic uh, discus thrower. Artwork from Sparta to Thebes to Corinth to Athens to any of the city-states is very similar. Architecture, the types of columns, the types of buildings, all very similar. The city layouts, the type of housing that they have, very similar. Um, the way that they do storytelling, their literature, they have common stories. Even the use of urns to tell stories, as we see... With this one uh, showing uh, the Trojan War. Um, their food was similar. Their technology, innovations. There's so much that they had in common, even though e each of them saw themselves as very different from one another. So with that being said, I would like for you to describe two ways that the Greek city-states were very different from one another and two ways that they were very similar in the comment section below. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for watching.